I'm sure you've seen this video of the World War II booby trap before, but what was the truth behind this video? Warfare became infinitely more gruesome in the 21st century thanks to some incredible advances in technology. But a very deadly trick deployed by the builders of this World War II bunker in Normandy used nothing more than the art of misdirection, quite literally. So in this video, we look at the most heavily defended section of the D-Day landing sites and the people who had to clear this position. We also look at the now infamous World War II booby trap video and I explain how the truth might be even stranger still. So join me as I take you to Fortress Hillman in Normandy. Throughout this video, we will look at the defenses of Normandy, but I want you to always remember the soldiers who set off on that fateful morning to rid Europe of tyranny. Please also remember the faces of these young men and try to imagine just for one moment how it must have felt in making that approach run to the beaches. Our story begins on D-Day, the 6th of June, 1944 on Sword Beach, where the 3rd Infantry Division would land. Their D-Day objective was the city of Caen, some 15 kilometers to the south. However, sighted between them and their objective was arguably the most heavily fortified position on the D-Day landing sites, Strong Point Hillman. So just south of Colville sur Orne and controlling the avenues of advance south was this fortress. The fortress was built on a ridge overlooking the landing beaches and as well as its garrison, it also housed a fire direction cell which allocated the fire units to fire onto the Normandy beaches. Although it looks quite small today, it originally covered an area of some four to 500 meters in width. It was garrisoned by the 736th Infantry Regiment, which consisted of approximately 150 men. And you can see here with this aerial photo just how far the defenses extended in either direction. It really did control the landscape. And now clearly this is not Bocage country. This view shows just how open the eastern extremities of the D-Day landing sites were. This is perfect for anti-tank guns and for observation to call in artillery. Looking to the rear of the position, we can see just how well sighted this position was on the highest feature. It really would have controlled all of the terrain. The position includes concrete to brooks for machine guns and for mortars. It had heavily reinforced steel cupolas for observation and for machine guns and it also had two large underground bunker systems connected by trenches and dug-in walkways. Extending out from the central position was a number of smaller bunkers and defensive positions connected by trenches and surrounded by barbed wire and even minefields. And then of course we have this famous booby trap video. So now you know that this booby trap was located right here on the Hillman site. And it was actually a ventilation shaft right outside the main bunker. But there is a view that it wasn't actually a booby trap and it was intended to serve another purpose. If you look at these plans, you can see the ventilation shaft and you can see the grill that would have prevented grenades from being thrown inside. 
the lower outlet was actually to allow flammable liquid to run off if the enemy had used flamethrowers. You can see the ventilation grills here, but on the Hillman example they haven't been installed yet. Perhaps it hadn't been finished. And here you can see other examples of ventilation grills, indicating that the Hillman site should have had them too. Who were the men who fought over the position at Hillman? The 1st Battalion of Suffolk had landed on Sword Beach at approximately 0830 hours and began heading inland towards Hillman. The Hillman position had not been extensively bombed prior to D-Day and because the forward observation officer for naval bombardment had been killed, they had no access to naval gunfire support they'd have to do this by themselves. But they did link up with A Squadron of the Staffordshire Yeomanry and with C Squadron of the 13th, 18th Fusars. Tanks need infantry and infantry need tanks to provide that integrated fire support and that armour. The position was wreckied by Captain Jeff Riley of A Company and the mortar line provided that fixing fires to blind and suppress the Hillman defensive position. The Middlesex Regiment provided a base of fire with their machine gun platoon to prevent enemy infiltration into the area and also to prevent enemy movement between the defensive positions. Again, this is all about suppressing the enemy and keeping their head down. This then enables the armour and the infantry to assault the position. They had to clear minefields with engineers and blow up gaps in the barbed wire. So this was truly a combined arms tactical action. The combined arms assault eventually succeeded in silencing the position at around about 20 hundred hours on D-Day but it wasn't until the following morning that the main garrison surrendered to the British. Interestingly, this cupola was replaced with a reproduction after the war, so this isn't original. But you can imagine the battering that it must have taken. Allegedly, Sherman fireflies were engaging this turret and the rounds were just ricocheting off. I'm not sure I'd like to be climbing up and down this ladder. Can you imagine just how loud it would be? As we head into the bunker, you can see the gun ports for machine guns and the firing slits to cover the approaches. The garrison effectively sealed themselves inside and it wasn't until the garrison commander requested orders that he decided to surrender to the British. His desk and his personal artefacts remain in the bunker today, gifted by his son. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and leave a comment. I read them all and I will reply to every single one. If you enjoyed this video and the others I've made, why not subscribe to the channel? I've got lots more coming. Guys, thank you very much for your support. Until next time.